Hi, I'm Pete and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. I got to tell you all about something that has been bothering me ever since we started farming and that's the Federal Farm Subsidy Program. It's a mess in my opinion and it does nothing but hurt small farms. But before I get all hot under the collar about this stuff, please remember to subscribe to our channel. It helps us out a lot. We're getting close to a thousand subscribers and then I can actually start getting a little bit of money for the time I spend making these. Last week, Hillary and I went to the local FSA office, which stands for Farm Services Administration, to renew our ARC coverage, which is Agricultural Risk Coverage. Every year they call multiple times and email multiple times bugging us to get the application in by the deadline. So we made the trip and we filled out the paperwork. And it's funny, every time I go to the office, and we've been doing this for, I don't know, five years now, I try to get them to explain what the program is and I never get it back in terms that I can understand. And that really makes me wonder if somebody can't explain something they take care of every day in plain language terms, I think there's an underlying problem. So after the visit, I did some research and did some thinking about this whole program, and that's what I'm going to rant about now. Here's an explanation of the ARC program, and there's similar ones. There's also one called the PLC, which is Profit Loss or something like that, but we're in the ARC. ARC stands for Agricultural Risk Coverage. Every four years, if things work right at the federal level, there's a new farm bill. So there was one in 2014, there was one in 2018, but it didn't take effect till 2019. And the rules change with every farm bill. From 2014 on, they've been pretty similar. The Agricultural Risk Coverage Program covers commodities like corn, soybeans, wheat, and even things like peanuts and cotton. And what it does is it kind of sets a bottom on the prices. So they look at a five-year history of what commodity prices have been for each crop. And if the crop falls below a price point based on that five-year history, then the government pays you a percentage of the difference between that price and the price of the market. It's complicated. It's based on national averages. But almost all the farmers who grow crops around here are enrolled in either the ARC or the PLC program. Our land is enrolled in the ARC as soybeans. And the reason it's enrolled in soybeans is because in 2014, under the farm bill that changed everything, the farmer who was leasing our land grew all soybeans. So we have 30 acres in the ARC program as soybeans. And I always say to the people at the office, well, wait a second, we have grassland pasture and hay. They said it doesn't matter. You're enrolled as soybeans and that could continue forward for another couple decades depending on how the farm bill goes. We'll get money for soybeans when soybean prices fall below the trip level and the funding kicks in. Goofy! We don't grow any soybeans. Most farmers will take this subsidy but they don't want to talk about it as any kind of welfare even though that same farm bill contains public assistance programs for the poor. When I talked to our local Farm Bureau representative about crop subsidies, he said, oh no, it's not a subsidy, it's insurance. Look at the name of the program, Agricultural Risk Coverage. Sounds like an insurance term, right? These commodity programs are definitely not a form of insurance. Every insurance policy I ever had, I had to pay a premium for. I'm not paying any premium to be in this program. And when a farmer gets a payment, they further the insurance analogy by calling it an income support payment. It's not welfare, no, 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 no. It's income support. And this Farm Bureau response is typical, and I have so many beefs with this organization. If you ever have a chance, pull up their website. It doesn't look like a, a farm lobbyist website. It looks like a website with a political agenda. Nothing about farming, all about sort of conservative values, which I don't particularly have a problem with, but they're the farm organization, not the political organization. But like it or not, the Farm Bureau is really the only lobby I have in Washington as a small farmer. The Farm Bureau lobbies for programs like ARC and PLC, but they also lobby for grant funding for small farming, for keeping cooperative extension going via their funding. They do it all, but they focus so much on these commodity programs, it really gets me bent out of shape. 
Now look, I don't really have a beef with any of the farmers that are enrolled with this program. Agriculture is a really tough business to be in and we need all the help we can get. My real problem is that it's short-circuiting the supply and demand pricing system of commodities in the U.S. Say a farmer grows soybeans one year and they make a good profit off the land they planted, but it turns out that a lot of other farmers planted soybeans too the next year and the price goes way down. Well, what does the farmer do? Quite often they just plant more soybeans hoping to get the same total profit off of more acreage, so the price goes down. So the farmer works harder and harder to make the same money and they have to buy bigger and bigger equipment to do things more efficiently and they run into debt which in my book debt is one of the hearts of problems in farming now the expensive machinery the expensive land and how much debt that farmers need to take on and how much they wind up paying to the banks every month versus putting into their pocket and these commodity programs make it particularly hard for the smaller farmers to stay in business that's why family farms are disappearing because commodity prices have trended so low over the last 30 or 40 years it's pushing the little guys out of business because the big farms come in and they can do it faster and cheaper because they have economies of scale. So what we wind up with is the government getting messed up in how farming evolves, favoring big factory farms over little farms. I don't think the government should be in that business, but they're incentivizing it with their commodity programs. Here's a good example of how this favoritism goes. If you're wanting to enroll in the ARC or the PLC program, all you got to do is go down to your local farm service agency office they'll actually fill out the paperwork for you. All you got to do is put your John Hancock on it and away it goes and back your money comes. We got um, a grant to help build this barn from the state. I had to do probably 50 pages of form filling, paperwork, narratives, business plan just to get this barn built. The government does offer money for small farm development but you got to jump through a lot of hoops and it's a competitive environment whereas if you're a mainstream farmer the tables all set for you well that's my rant I think that these programs have done so much harm to American agriculture and you know one thing I haven't mentioned is the oversupply problems we have so much corn and soybeans and wheat and things in storage because we're growing more than we really need and we're having to find novel things to do with them like look at what corn has been made into. Number two, field corn's made into so many products because we have so much of it, we had to find something to do with it. I think that there needs to be less commodities grown in the U.S. so that farmers can make a fairer pay for each thing that they grow. What should farm subsidies look like? Because I believe there's a place for them. Well, I think that the commodity subsidization needs to either be changed drastically or removed entirely. I think that there should be government funding for extreme weather events, drought, flood, hurricane, tornado, and I think that the government needs to find ways to promote innovation, which I know is a, an extreme long shot, but farms that are doing unique things to make the most out of the land like we are need help, and it's a really hard living to make. I mean, we barely scratch by on 45 acres, and we're stretching our skills to just get to that break-even point. I think that the lack of government support is one of the reasons that small farming feels so lonely. And there's nothing we're going to do about it. Like I said, it's not going to change, but at least I can rant about it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a great day. Stay safe during the corona outbreak, and I'll see you next time.